What they showed is that Parkinson's rates are five times higher in industrial nations compared to parts of the um, sub-Saharan Africa. Parkinson's is rising the fastest in countries that undergo rapid industrialization. And for example, China, their prevalence has more than doubled in just one generation. They are saying that they think Parkinson's is just the canary in the coal mine. Parkinson's is a wake up call and that we need to listen. 87% of people with Parkinson's, okay, 87%, of the people with Parkinson's have no family history and no genetic cause. So they don't have any of the Parkinson's genes that have been identified. That means only 13% of people with Parkinson's have a genetic mutation. Okay, so that totally throws the genetic theory out the window. And even among the most well-known Parkinson's related genes, it's they're saying that gene is not your destiny. For example, one of the most well-known Parkinson's disease uh, related genes is LRRK2. Only about 30% of people who have that mutation ever develop the disease, 30%. The second most common gene is the GBA mutation. Only about 10% of people with that mutation ever develop the disease. So hmm. it's not genetic. Like all, all of this research, all of this money has been poured into the genes and how can we change the gene and how, you know, how do we suppress it or whatever? And it's not genetic. They're looking in the wrong place. So that's the first thing. One of the first things these authors dispel is you have to change it. They even say that in here. We have to change our thinking. I'm like, Joel, you would love these men. Like, I was like, oh my gosh, I want to meet them yeah, because yeah, they're yeah. saying, stop looking at the old things. So, okay. So it's not, it's not in the elderly it, it only, and it's not genetic. So then they ask the next, log next logical question, what in our environment is yeah. changing then that's affecting all of these brains so badly? Right. And they said that it's environmental chemicals, quote, chemicals in our food, water, and air have created this largely man-made disease. These chemicals are all around us and none are necessary. That is a direct quote from them. So once again, this is a man-made condition. So if you are saying that, usually you need evidence that it's created in more of an industrial nation, right? Mm -hmm. They have it. So this is the great thing about everything I'm gonna present to you today, this evidence of what causes it and then how to you know, help yourself lower your risk. It all comes from decades of epidemiological studies, occupational research, animal models, and mechanistic lab work. So it's not their opinion. This thing is highly referenced, okay? What they showed is that Parkinson's rates are five times higher in industrial nations compared to parts of the um, sub-Saharan Africa. So five times higher in industrial nations. Parkinson's is rising the fastest in countries that undergo rapid industrialization. And for example, China, their prevalence has more than doubled in just one generation, okay? The, the hopeful thing is they are saying, their bottom line is for most people, the disease is preventable and the suffering is avoidable, okay? So as we talk through these things, know that there is hope and these authors are very hopeful. They are saying that they think Parkinson's is just the canary in the coal mine because Parkinson's itself is, is tied to loss of neurons that produce dopamine and those neurons are very vulnerable to environmental toxins, um, particularly toxins that can damage the mitochondria. So what they're saying is Parkinson's is a wake up call and that we need to listen because it's rising faster than any other neurological condition, but basically it's because it's signaling something bigger. It's signaling this message to us that our modern environment is quietly eroding our brain resilience. And we need to be thinking of what's going to happen beneath the surface with other neurological conditions that are more resilient, right? So, so in other words, this is just the tip of the iceberg. It's tip of the iceberg is what they're, is what they're saying. Um, so one thing that I thought was really interesting is that when we talk about Parkinson's or these other neurological conditions, even ADHD, we talk about how they're in the brain, right? This is a condition that happens in the brain. 
what they're saying is it doesn't actually start in the brain at all. Which to do that, you have to already be open-minded enough to think that a dis-ease or one of these conditions can be systemic. Okay, that's what we talk about a lot. These are actually systemic conditions. Right. So they're, they've described, and this is backed by literature, two routes that Parkinson's may actually begin with. So, so what they're trying to figure out here is the etiology. How does Parkinson's actually start? Okay, and they're saying the first route is actually through your nose, that there's airborne like toxins and like industrial solvents those can enter through the nasal cavity and they travel along your olfactory nerve, you know, where you smell. And it has a direct connection to the brain. It can actually bypass the blood brain barrier. This entry point may explain why a very early sign of, of Parkinson's is commonly loss of smell, right? It has a direct route to your olfactory nerve. The second origin, the entry point for Parkinson's, which again, I'm, I hope that I'm not just glossing over that. I hope you're getting the impact of what they're presenting in this book, which is a main, it's out there in mainstream because it, our current like accepted belief in this culture is that it starts in the brain. There's some kind of genetic defect that causes some misfolding of proteins, for example, and that happens in the brain. It's the same story with Alzheimer's, okay? Mm -hmm. They are saying this is completely mm -hmm. wrong, that, that Parkinson's, in essence, enters the body. It, it, so it's not the body having a defect, right? It's not the body messing up. It's actually your body protecting you from these toxins that are entering the body in two ways, one through the nose, the second one through the gut. So toxins that are consumed in food or water have been shown to be able to disrupt the gut environment, you know, leaky gut, dysbiosis, for example, and that can trigger misfolding in your gastrointestinal tract of a protein that's called um, alpha synuclein. That misfolded protein is a hallmark of Parkinson's. And they're saying that can actually happen in the gastrointestinal tract. And then it travels up to your brain by your vagus nerve, which is your communication superhighway between your gut and your brain, right? That pathway helps to explain why another early symptom of neurological conditions is digestive issues. And I'm sure people have heard of this too, like with autism, for example, they often have digestive issues. This may explain in part that condition as well. And the fact that that it, those misfolded proteins travel along the vagus nerve, for our, our audience that has heard us talk a lot about a root cause being stress, that should ring a bell to you, the vagus nerve, right? Mm -hmm. That gives you a pathway there under which stress can actually amplify the negative consequences of these toxins that are being consumed. Okay, but for right now, so stay with me on this path of thinking. For right now, there's two different entry points, nose and gut, one disease process. So so, so, so are, are you thinking of it, just to clarify, are you thinking of it that this, are they presenting this, that Parkinson's is a, is is something that, that invades? Yeah. As opposed to something that comes internally You mean that, that starts internally? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So yes, the the idea is Parkinson's begins where your body interfaces with the modern world. Right. Through breathing and through ingesting. Yes, that it's something you get from external. Wow. So right? It's, it's invasive <laughs> rather than something endemic within your head that quits working. That's exactly right. That's exactly well, that, right. That's a that's a that's a major major shift in thinking. 